Number six, Sawada Tsunayoshi. Now, from the very start, Suna was chosen to become the tenth of the Von Gola family, and as we speak right now, to this very time, he is already the tenth and the true boss of the Von Gola family, and chosen as the rightful boss as the Von Gola family. But things with Suna are quite very not what people expect. For one thing, we are talking about the Mafia here, and Suna, he doesn't want to become a Mafia boss because of, like, he can imagine what would happen if he was a Mafia boss and Kyoko didn't really, wouldn't really like people who are from the Mafia, and that's why Suna does not want to become a Mafia boss, but I think it's a very good opportunity. If you were chosen to become the tenth of, of a, a special family or a family like the Von Gola, you had no choice but to but to accept, even if it's life and death. And Suna has been through life and death through each of his battles with Mukuro, Zanzis, and lots of other special villains such as um such as Byakuran. But mostly Suna always comes out on top with his skills. He is unrivaled, you could say, and as the tenth generation of the Von Gola family, there's no way he could fail. The reason why he's my favorite character is because he never gives up. He always keeps on going no matter how tough it is. When it comes to the will to protect his friends, his will becomes even stronger than ever. You know, at first season one he was just using the dying wolf flames, the dying wolf's bullet for the first time, and usually his clothes would rip, but you know, throughout the seasons he Basically, he basically overcame that because now he's using the dying will pills, basically. He eats them, and, you know, he's able to just go in dying will mode so easily. And this is the power of the 10th generation of the Vongola family. So even though you could say Suna's a cocky kid who's not very good, like, in his school days, I know one thing. Suna does not back down. He's one of my favorite characters in Got Take Your Hit and Arrow Born. Because when I see him always smiling or either, you know, serious about a match, I know Suna can keep on going no matter what. His special moves that are the X Burner, the Zero Point Breakthrough, and the Zero Point Breakthrough Revise. Lots of moves. They're all amazing. X Burner, all of his moves. So all I can say is, especially Kamiya Forma, but all I can say is Suna is amazing. There's no doubt about it. And he has definitely chosen to become the tenth of the Von Gola family and he's already chosen as the rightful boss so all I can say is I respect Suna in a way because right now he's grown through each of his battles and gone from coward to a true Von Gola boss okay so number five Zanzis Zanzis is the current leader of the Vadia and Von Gola Knight's adopted son and was the main antagonist of the Vadia arc basically meaning he was the main enemy and during the Vadia arc, he and Suna battled for the Sky Von Gola ring and the position of the 10th Von Gola boss, which Suna in the end won. Yes, spoiler. So anyway, for the rest of it, Von, yeah, like I said, 10th Von Gola boss. Later in the future arc, he remains the leader of the Vadia and leads a raid against the Milfiore, taking their headquarters. He battles against Olgert and one of the fake funeral rats. Raciel, I believe, yes, as well and easily wins showing that he has grown much stronger in the future. The history of Zanzas. Zanzas was born and spent his early childhood in an improvised region of Italy. With only his mentally ill mother to care for him, his mother discovered his flame of wrath when he was very young and brought him to the Vongola Ninth when she and Zanzas confronted the Ninth and Zanzas demonstrated the flame of wrath. The Ninth accepted Zongola, I'm about to say Vongola, Zongola or whatever. Um, the Ninth accepted Zanzas and placed his scarf around the boy, agreeing that Zanzas was indeed his son, even though he had never seen the woman or her son before. Eight years before the start of the ring conflict, Zanzas discovered his true hair heritage from Tim Timoteo's diary finding out he's not his real son and Timoteo has no intention to give him the position of the next Vongola boss because he doesn't have Vongola blood. Basically Santos was never, you know, he doesn't have Vongola blood. That's definitely the truth. Like literally he was in a poor place or that's all I can say. He was like in a poor place when I remember watching the anime as well. So that's basically some things I know about Zanzas. So yeah, he was adopted out of pity, enraged by the revelation Zanzas along with his chosen body of guardians planned a rebellion, basically. And that rebellion, however, led to the incident known as Cradle Affair. This rebellion, however, however, failed as Timoteo froze him with Vongola Primo's technique, Zero Point Breakthrough First Edition. Zongola was frozen for eight years, heavily guarded until someone unfroze the ice and freed him. Okay, so that's 
basically all I remember when watching the anime itself. So yeah, the reason why Zonzus has all those scars on him, on his face everywhere, is because the ninth, his adopted father, used the Zero Point Breakthrough, first edition. The most recognizable, the large one on his left cheek during the video arc, his hair is spiky and he has a buzz cut on the sides. It is also adorned with features and an animal tail basically, which I didn't really get at first when I saw Zonis for the first time. At the nape of his neck, coming over his left shoulder to the rest in the front, he has tall and muscular build. He also wears a Vadia uniform jacket on his shoulders. Well, he is the leader of the Vadia, there's no doubt about that. So like I said, on his shoulders, much like a cape, he matches it with a white dress, shirt, black pants. Basically, he's like wearing a suit and all that stuff, you know, he's looking, he's looking good and all that stuff. The future arc, roughly 10 years later, his hair grown a bit. So yeah. Long severely spiked, he has removed the animal tail and all that stuff. Good, it's good thing he removed it in the future because I saw something different about Zonzis when I was looking at the future arc. So good job Zonzis, you looked like a freak before in the past, but now you're different now, you're trustworthy now. The reason why I call Zonzis one of my favorite characters is because he actually went from being a jerk, like being like ruthless and everything. He was my favorite when he was ruthless and all that stuff, but even in the near future he's ruthless and all that stuff, but he's still trustworthy, you know what I mean? He even talked to Suna during in, in the future saying how how are you doing Vongola? Have you come have you become stronger? Show them the will of the Vongola. I mean it was weird to hear what Zonzis said even though it's no mercy. But still no mercy. I like him a bit because he's cruel and ruthless. That's why he's one of my favorite characters. I sometimes like one of the common collected kind of guys who are crazy and cool, but I also adore the heroes as well. But Zonzis, I believe he uses two twin pistols, I believe, and those are some crazy pistols he's got there, I'm not gonna lie. But this nigga can handle two guns. Not bad, Zons. It's not bad. You took all the scars like a man. You used two guns like a man. You're like a boss, dude. You're like a Vongola boss if you were able to become one. But now you're just the current leader of the Vadia. So let's end it right there. Number four, Dino. Dino is the son of the Nan Chiavarone boss. As a teenager, Dino attended a school for children of the Mafia where he first met Squalo, aka the person Yamamoto fought against during the battle with the rings. Anyway, Reborn tutored him before leaving for Japan. Now, Dino is shown in some of the arcs, but the one arc that he was a huge help in was the future arc. I mean, the daily life arc was complete shit, and the body arc was very amazing, but the future arc is the one Dino was most amazing in, you know what I mean? The Future Dino was a lot crazy, really awesome, but you know, the same thing remains the same. It's like a different, like, it's like a difference between real life and not, but I'll say it like this. The thing about Dino is that whenever his men are around, that's when he starts to, you know, that's when he starts decreasing in battle, is what I hear in the anime, is what I see in the anime. Dino starts decreasing in battle whenever his men are here. Basically, it's like the opposite because whenever our team is here, you could say, whenever our, our teammates are here, we basically get the upper hand. But Dino just ends up screwing that upper hand up when he ends up failing, just dropping on the ground after his men just show up. So all I can say is, I think in the past, in the future, it's different. I think his men just show up and he's like doing good or something like that. I really don't remember. But he had like a difference in in his personality and all that stuff when he fights. So that's all. But you know, when reading the manga of Katekyo Hitman Reborn, I realized that when Suno when Suno was fighting Mukuro, I was reading the manga and I realized that it almost looks like that Suna and um it's it looks like Suna and Dino could be brothers because basically Reborn was talking about Dino in the past, in the past when he was, you know, facing off against a bunch of dudes and all that stuff, and how, and how Reborn once trained Dino. So basically I heard that Reborn said, Reborn was all like, Suna, this is the path your brother Dino had to go through. So I don't know if Dino is like a distant relative of Suna and Suna just doesn't know, but because of, you know, the whole Von Gola and all that stuff, the Chiavarone family has up to 5,000 men are members in that family and it's the same with the Vongola I believe but different so all I can say is I think Suna and Dino might be brothers so you're probably gonna put on the comment section of this video and you're gonna say so dude are you saying that Dino and Suna are brothers just because you heard that that Reborn said it from the manga no I didn't hear Reborn say it from the manga all I heard was Reborn said that 
Suna, this is the path your brother Dino had to go through. So I don't know if, if his family, the Von Gola, I don't know if Suna's family, the Von Gola, and Dino's family, the Chiaparone family, are like relatives. Like, I don't know if Suna and Dino could be brother. I'm trying to, I don't know. But I'll show you, if you want proof or something that I heard Reborn say that, um, ask me. I'll totally send a copy of the page to you. I'm not sure, so don't go judging me on getting the things wrong. Because I'm still reading the manga, and I'm already on the new manga that left off. The new um, arc that left off after the anime, which the new arc was released, you know, back then when, when Katsuko Hitman Reborn ended their anime. So, yeah. So far, yeah. But let's get down to the real reason here. Um, the reason why I like Dino as an amazing character, as one of my favorite characters, is because he's cool in the right way. His design in the anime is very amazing. The, the yellow hair and all that stuff. The, the cool way he just... You know, fights and all that stuff. But just when his men are around, that's when he loses his guard. He drops his guard when his men are around. Because like I, I don't I don't get it either. It's like it's basically something that reminds me of Goku Deta a bit. You know, it's you know what I mean? But like I said, Dino is very amazing. I can't underestimate this guy. He has a lot of skill in battle. And he is just amazing. He was a huge help in the future arc with his whole box weapon and all that stuff. And Dino has come a long way through his training. Just one thing doesn't change about him. And that's how he always loses his focus when it comes to his men showing up. That's all. Yo, number three is a very special favorite character of mine. And I didn't want to leave it out. Anyway, his name is Giotto, a.k.a. Vangola Primo. The first boss and the founder of the Vangola family. He is also the creator of the Zero Point Breakthrough Technique. After his retirement, he moved to Japan and started a family. He is the paternal great-great-great-grandfather of Suna, who has repeatedly been shown to be similar to him. So definitely, yeah, definitely, I knew it. He was similar to Suna for a reason. There had to be a reason why he was he was like similar to Suna. But I can tell I can tell you one thing. He is way different from the cocky Suna way back then. So anyway. Um, let's keep on going. Shown to be similar to him as they have the same weapon and techniques including the zero point breakthrough, almost identical appearances, and equally unorthodox families. The first family includes Acriol Kratz, basically military men, rival mafiosos, and re religious people. Yeah, I think I think I know what they mean when they mean religious people. Um, I think they're talking about the person in Vangola Primo's family who is resembled to Yamamoto, I believe, and that didn't make sense at first. But yeah, for the rest of it, um, yeah. Their guardians are quite similar as well. Yamamoto, Hibari, Mukuro, Lambo, Gokudera, and Ryohei have already been shown to be very much like their first predecessors in appearance, weapon of choice, and personality. Kyoto looks very similar to Suna though. They have different hair colors. He has spiky, golden blonde hair, and his eyes are a sharp orange tone. The same as Dying Will, basically. The same as Suna's when the letter is in hyper Dying Will mode. That's actually what I like when the flames just fill, when it's just like Dying Will flames on a letter that's actually pretty good i kind of want one of those anyway um dying will mode his arises are a lighter shade of orange he wears a tie a black tie a black suit you know black suit with white pin strips and a white undershirt with a black tie he also wears a long cloak with a golden decorated decorated attachment which later becomes natsu's kamio forma not Natsu from Fairy Tale, Natsu as the box weapon. Don't be thinking I'm talking about Natsu from Fairy Tale. We are in Katekyo Hitman we're born, okay? But definitely the one thing I can say about Vangola Primo is that throughout his appearance in the anime, he has always been shown in hyper dying world mode. And that's pretty bitchin'. But for the rest of it, he is shown to be a calm and collected leader that cares for his friends and family and is willing to protect them from harm. He has a strong sense of justice and act actively pursues what he believes in is right for the people, which is why he formed the Vangola family in the first place. He is similar to Suna in many aspects, especially their soft nature that Daimon once had commented on. Likewise, Reborn has once stated that Vangola Primo was the kind of person who accepted anyone into the family. Regardless of background, he also basically is shown to highly value friendship and other bonds that he has with people he knows and wishes for their bonds to be always remembered. He is also a forgiving person that never holds any grudges when Daimon betrayed him. Gyoto still considers him as one of the guardians. Also, Gyoto seems to share Suna's beliefs that a person not willing to die, oh, not willing to die, protecting his friends 
does not deserve to be Von Gola boss. Ain't that the truth, Suna? And as for <coughs> Sansa's <coughs> not a good leader, <coughs> definitely destroys his family. <laughs> Anyway, for the rest of it, I gotta say Von Gola Primo is one of my favorite characters for a reason. Not just because he looks like Sooner or any of that, but because he has the passion. He's he's a, a forgiving person. He doesn't, no matter what, he still accepts anyone as his friend, even if they do betray his family. But I, what I can't see is why the person who resembles Hibari in Von Gola Primo's family, why would he ever join? Why would he ever join a family? I thought. Like, his personality as he buddies is that he buddy doesn't join nobody. He does what he wants, yet he still helps out the family when he doesn't give a fucking fly, when he doesn't give a flying fuck about, you know, what goes on with Suna and them. He just doesn't. He just cares about protecting his school. But the one resembled to he buddy is, you know, practically different, and he still remains with the family as well. But for the rest of it, Von Gola Primo is my favorite character because seeing him in action, you know, seeing him in that one episode where, where Reborn was talking about him made me realize that Primo is actually pretty, pretty awesome. Number two, Hayato Gokudera. One thing about Hayato Gokudera is just one thing. Whenever he sees his hot sister Bianchi, he literally just gets a belly ache, just gets like a tummy ache and just goes on the ground. He, <laughs> I'm done. So, Goku Dera basically had this fear back then, right? Basically, his sister, the thing his sister did to him basically was the first time she cooked for Goku Dera. One thing Goku Dera never knew that he already knows for all these years is that Biaki, Biaki, Goku Dera's Goku Dera's stepsister, I think, or half sister, you could say, is basically a poison cooking bitch. So that's basically why Goku Dera doesn't get that much respect. Basically, Akira Amano, the creator of Katekyo Him and Reborn, put Goku Dera with respect and non respect. The reason why it's non respect is I've already told you poison cooking from his sister Bianchi and then just getting on the ground because of that. And respect because he is a punk. A, a crazy punk. He he basically does what he wants, but sometimes he would get Suna in trouble because you know he's always beating up, beating up dudes. Whoever messed with Suna, whoever like messed with Suna, because Goku Dena, that's just his job. Basically, to him, it's just his job to protect to protect his boss. He is the right hand man of Suna, and he does whatever it takes to protect his boss. All I can hear when he's talking to Suna is tenth. 10th, 10th. The only time he said his name Suna was the very first time Goku Dera appeared in the anime. That was the only very first time. So all I can say is that when, you know, after that, for the rest of the anime, Goku Dera is just referring to Suna as the 10th because he is the 10th of the Von Gola family. And the family members must respect the leader of the Von Gola family, which is the boss. That is why Goku Dera keeps saying Judaine, Judaine, which means 10th in um, Japanese basically Judaine, Judaine. that's all I hear Goku Dada say to Suna but he's willing to fight to willing to risk his life in order to protect the boss he doesn't give a crap about Yamamoto he doesn't give a crap about anybody in the family besides the boss that's all I can say I mean Goku Dada can be a jerk at most of the time but he's very amazing he doesn't back down from a fight at all and Yes, he is a punk. Definitely a punk. He doesn't let no one stand in his way, but Goku Dad is a beast. He's definitely one of my very, very favorite characters in the anime. So all I gotta say is Goku Dad gets an a, a S+, plus, basically. S+. plus, Because Goku Dad is too epic. Like, literally, he's smart and epic. I mean, even in class, when they're all together at Nami Mori Middle School, I mean, sorry, Nami Mori High or Middle School or whatever, Goku Dera can just be a show-off at times. I mean, when everyone's parents were coming over in that one episode, like even Suna's mom, when everyone's parents were coming over in that episode, Goku Dera acted like a beast, man. He ain't give a shit. He even talked down to the smart bitches. For Goku Dera, his specialty would be dynamites. He uses them all the time in each of his battles, but when he got his box weapon, things were a bit different. Now he just uses this skull shaped weapon on his arm in order to shoot blasts and all that stuff and you know all I can see is the red desperation flames on Goku Dera and it's totally amazing Sistema CAI is awesome 
like really awesome. His partner Udi is box weapon. I really like it. I, I like it all. For Goku Detta, I can say that Goku Detta is a very amazing character. I mean, he doesn't let no one beat him. Like he doesn't let no one defeat him. But his, but the only person he can be defeated by is his sister. When it comes to poison cooking, that reminds him about his past with his sister and how terrible Bianchi is at cooking. But in the end, Goku Detta is still a beast either way. So all I can say is, Goku Detta, you're the best out there, my boy. You're the best. Bruh, kill your he buddy. Number one. He buddy, if you don't back your ass up right now, I swear to God, you ain't gonna bite no one to death. You hear me? You are not gonna bite me to death. I don't give a shit if you bite anyone else to death in the anime itself, but me? Boy, if you don't back your school disciplinary ass up, I swear to God, he buddy. Anyway, Kill Your He buddy is one of my favorite characters as well. There are so many reasons why his catchphrase, he always says, I'm going to bite you to death. Yo ass ain't gonna do nothing, he buddy. Except to anyone. You can beat anyone, that's true. But how the hell can you keep up with Reborn is the real is the real question here. But anyway, he buddy, yes, part of the disciplinary squad. And things about he buddy is that he he has a sworn vow to protect Nani Moni school. Basically, he has to do whatever it takes. Anyone who invades the school without permission or without being here will get his ass kicked by He Buddy. Lots of things that He Buddy has achieved in the anime was basically protecting the school, and you gotta give him guts for that. Him being in the future arc and, you know, facing off against the Phantom Knight when the future He Buddy just disappeared out of nowhere. Basically, he still actually stood a chance. He was in the future and he just literally. You know, he 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 stood he stood face to face with the Phantom Knight, even though it was his past self. So all I can say is that future Hibari is really epic. But when I see Hibari just using those two weapons on him, I say Hibari is just the man. All right, he is totally the man. I mean, Hibari has no reason to be in the Vangola family. He doesn't even give a flying fuck. He just does whatever he pleases because. No, like, he buddy joins nobody, alright? I'm gonna tell you that right now. He buddy joins nobody. His tutor is Dino, basically, and he buddy, and yet he buddy takes the ring and all that stuff and helps Suna out in his own problems with the whole family against the Milfiore during the whole future arc. And that's when he buddy actually was interested in a fight. And to tell you the truth, he, to, like, he's the exact opposite of Suna. He buddy's epic, he's crazy, he doesn't give a damn about nothing but himself, and Suna is clumsy, and basically, you already know the rest for Suna. But he buddy, he doesn't give a crap about anything. He, he does what he wants. He does, he does what his mind puts him to do. So, all I can say is lots of the fangirls think he buddy's hot. That's... To them, that is totally true, but he buddy's epic in a way. I don't think he buddy's interested in any girls. He buddy's, he buddy's my favorite character because he's just the way he is. His personality, his personality is what makes him my favorite character in the anime itself. And I think I'd have to end it here. All I can all I can say is that's my top six Kateko him and reborn characters of all time. One of my favorite. I haven't gotten started with my female favorite characters of, of Kateko him and reborn. But stay tuned for my next episode review of the Boruto anime, and I think it's tomorrow. Basically, I can't tell, but if it is, then I will get started with the review. And also stay tuned for my next live reaction of the next chapters of Kateko him and reborn. If I ever get time to review them, since the manga has been complete for like over these past years and I'm a bit late. But yeah, stay tuned for the live reactions. Thanks for watching, Powerful Swordsman.